Dear friends, originally I wanted to tell you about some very serious crimes, felonies in fact, that are committed here in this prison against individual prisoners. Sunlight is the best of disinfectants here too, as it is that which shows the truth and thus clears the way for justice. But I will save this for another day as two of my attorneys are already on the case or on those two cases, which I'm going to deal with in particular. And because you have written me to so many letters to express your condolences and to keep me afloat. They have shown me that this is exactly the right moment in time to focus on the good and the positive, which is winning over all the bad and the evil, which we're being terrorized with 24 seven by the mainstream media and the puppet politicians. And that's because your letters are the best proof that the most important human quality, empathy, still exists on our side of the fence, not just as empty boilerplate language, but in reality with real meaning. And therefore, it doesn't matter if those on the other side of the fence uh, never had this human quality because they're a psychopath, or if they lost it because as a result of psychological terrorism and propaganda, which would make them sociopaths. What does matter, as far as I'm concerned, are these three things. First, my wife and I do not miss anyone on the other side of the fence. No one there has ever been a real friend anyway. Um, all our real friends are still here on our side of the fence. Many here on this side of the fence have become real friends, as for example, evidenced through your letters. Second, we can easily do without those on the other side of the fence because we have everything we need to live a human life without wars and without the deadly healthcare terrorism of the World Health Organization and the pharmaceutical industry. Those on the other side of the fence don't know this. And for many, the realization, if it ever comes, will come too late. Third, strangely enough, I and also my wife have this sensation of not really being able to see and hear those on the other side anymore. The invisible fence that separates us um, from them seems to serve both as a kind of sound barrier and as a kind of fog. It's as though everything that's on the other side of the fence is blocked out because we have much more important things to focus on and that is a truly human life. This is not to say, of course, that we can simply forget about the other side, no. We will deal with it in so far as it is necessary for the protection and building of our new human life. Of course, we will make sure that the truth about the pandemic, the wars, 9-11, the highly profitable for the monsters, climate scare, uh, comes to light so that justice will find its way and no one will escape it. But when that is done, everything on the other side will have disappeared, I believe. Everything is now going our way and fast. The whole truth is coming to light so that we can have a kind of closure for all those monst monstrosities that we've been forced to face and deal with. Now that a second attempt on Donald Trump's life has just been thwarted, the investigation of the first one becomes even more urgent. Who or what made that 20-year-old kid shoot at Donald Trump two months ago and get killed so that he cannot answer any questions anymore? Maybe the murder of the 26-year-old Turkish-American peace activist in the occupied West Jordan land um, will help answer these questions. 
it is clear that she did not throw any stones or rocks as if that would be a justification for killing her. It is also clear that the bullet that killed her was neither a stray bullet nor did it ricochet off a rock. Rather, it was a sniper's bullet from a sniper who aimed directly at her head. And it is also clear that the U.S. government will not do anything to the get to get to the bottom of this, even though she's an American citizen. But her parents and the Turkish government will. I wouldn't be surprised if this ultimately leads to Turkey leaving NATO. Speaking of assassinations and assassination attempts, Donald Trump announced a while ago that he will make all the classified documents public that have to do with the assassination of JFK. And I uh, believe that he has very important people helping him on this. Everything is moving fast and in the right direction. A few weeks ago, I told you that I like classical music too. And I mentioned an area by Luciano Pavarotti, Caruso. Well, I made a mistake and I apologize. It's not an area, but it's Luciano Pavarotti's rendition of a song by Lucio Dalla. But I'm sure had Cher heard it in the New York Met, she would have once again been moved to tears. I should have known better as my grandmother, Emma, quite frequently took me to the theater and the opera when I was little. Um, I believe she did it because she felt that I needed some kind of cultural education too. I didn't really like Wagner, I remember that, but I loved the, Ital the Italian operas and operettas, but also the British operettas. Um, Italy, to me, has always been synonymous with enjoying life. This is reflected by Italian food, furniture, Italian clothes, and of course, Italian music. For example, Azzurro by Adriano Celentano, or Bello Impossibile by Gianna Nanini. I have a very distinct feeling that we will soon have every reason to celebrate, my friends.